hey y'all welcome back to another video in this video we're gonna get started with the AI system so with that let's get into this so I I want to preface this video by saying that the method we're gonna be using comes from the youtuber Matt B I will leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description you can go check him out and then also I want to start off by apologizing for the previous video that I uploaded that's now currently deleted. Um, I didn't do my due diligence before uploading the video, so I apologize for that. So with that, let's get into it. So the problem with the previous video is that I didn't know, or I didn't realize that the BP progress plan would interfere with the AI system. So before we set up the AI system, if you still have the BP progress plan in your level, such as like this, um, select it and then delete it from the level so that there's no interference between the two. So with that, we're then going to go to the blueprints folder and then in here, create a new folder. I'm gonna call this AI. And then in the AI folder, we are going to right click and then create a new blueprint class of class actor we're gonna call this bp underscore ai spline and then we're gonna open the blueprint and then in the blueprint in the components tab we're gonna add a new component called spline oh no that's not, not a not a spline mesh a spline component and then i'm just gonna make this a little bit longer and then compile and save and then you can close this blueprint and then we're going to head back to the blueprints folder and then we're going to go over to the sports car and then with the sports car blueprint selected we're going to right click and create a child blueprint class and then press enter and then we're going to move this newly created child blueprint over to the ai folder because we're going to use this blueprint as the ai car so the reason why we're creating a child blueprint is because we want certain properties to be inherited and then to make it easier rather than having to go through the setup process all over again so before we get started here i just want to create um, create a function for the dampening so this set angular dampening for the vehicle we are going to select every node connected to it and then we're going to collapse this into a node by right clicking and then say collapse function okay just rename this function to set angular damping and then compile and save so the reason for the child blueprint is much like what we did just now if we delete the parent tick which we don't want because the um, parent tick or parent begin play these will pull information from the parent class so say for example the parent tick if the event begin with the event tick starts it will pull all the information linked to the parent event tick which is all of this which is not the one because the respawn check is also linked to the event tick so if you only want certain things delete the parent tick and now what they're gonna do is we're gonna right click and look for a sequence node and then at the beginning of the sequence what you should do is then set angular dampening so we're gonna call the function we just created from the parent class and then this also works if you want to pull other functions such as the skid marks and even the engine sound so with a child of a parent you can pull functions and variables into the child without having to um, set them up yourself again in the child blueprint so that's one of the benefits to that so now at the event begin play we're going to leave the parent begin play attached we don't want to remove that there's some things there that are beneficial to the child but we're going to drag off from there and say get all actors of class and then we're going to look for the bp ai spline created and then we're going to drag off from out actors and say get a copy and then drag off from the pin and then promote to a variable. I'm gonna call this variable spline and then connect the execution pin and then compile and save. And then in the level, we're gonna drag in the PPS spline and then just cover the racetrack with it. So I'll see you all back. So with 
the AI is playing now in the level. We're gonna go back into the sports car child blueprint. And then we are going to create a new function. We're gonna call this steering. And then the method we're using, like I said at the beginning of the video, comes from the YouTuber Math B. I will leave a link to his YouTube in the description. But I'm not going to be explaining how the system works. Uh, this is merely a recreation of his. If you want to know how it works as well as the in and outs of it, you can go and check out his channel for that. So when you get started, hold control and drag in the spline variable we created. And then from the spline variable, we're going to drag off and look for find input key closest to world location and then drag this out a bit and then we're going to right click in our free space and say get actor location and then we're going to connect we're going to connect the get actor location to the world location by the find input key closest to world location and then from the target spline we're going to drag off and look for get distance along spline as spline input key and then we're gonna insert a redirect node just before the node. And then we're gonna connect the return value from the find input key close the world location to the in key. And then from the redirect node we create, we're gonna drag off and look for a get spline length. And then we also wanna insert a redirect node before the spline length node, and then just move that up. And then to fix this, instead of doing it manually, just select all the portions that you want. And then if you hold shift alt w it will align everything to the center uh short little um, keystrokes to simplify the work process and now what we want to do is we're going to add a couple of things we want to add three subtract nodes so we're going to add three of these Control c Control v V again and then what we want to do is make them look like a triangle just to simplify things and then we're also going to add add node to it and then from here it gets kind of complicated so please follow along carefully so from the get distance along spline as spline input key you're going to take from the return value and add that to the subtract at the top which is at the top of the triangle um the, tri the subtract triangle we created and then that's gonna go to the bottom pin and then the top pin for the top triangle for the top subtract we're gonna drag from the return value of the get spline length like so and then just add a redirect node just to tidy things up a bit and then again from the get distance along spline as spline input key the return value we're going to drag that off and then add that to the add the top pin for the add and then from the bottom pin by the add we're going to drag off and then say promote to variable this is going to be we're going to call this variable prediction which in math these value is called steer prediction i'm just going to call it prediction because i'm not going to use the the full method like what he used mine is slightly modified except for steering I will be using the full video, the full method that he used and then from the steer prediction we're going to drag off from there and then add that to the bottom pin of the bottom left subtract and then the top pin from the same subtract will then be connected to the get spline length and then the top subtract in the subtract triangle the pin the output pin for that will then be connected to the bottom right top pin of the subtract and then from the steer prediction we're going to add a redirect node and then from that redirect node we are going to then put that in the same subtract so then this is how it's supposed to look from the steer prediction the steer prediction is connected to the add the bottom left subtract as well as the bottom right subtract so now with all that confusing work done you can pause and then just double check and make sure that everything is connected like it is on the screen so then from there we are going to drag off from the redirect node that's connected to the target spline and then we are going to look for get 
location at distance along spline and then for here what we're gonna do is from the subtract the bottom right subtract we're gonna drag off and look for a select node select float node the subtract is connected where it should be the bottom right subtract is connected to the a value the add gets connected to the b value and then for the pick a we're going to drag off from the get distance along spline as spline input key and then we're going to look for a greater than value and then the value for the bottom part of the greater than is from the bottom left subtract the one that has nothing connected to it yet so that will connect to the bottom pane of the greater than value and then the return value there will then go to the peak a value and that is pretty much how the system is set up so we're gonna add a couple of redirect nodes here again just to tidy things up some more and then the return value by the select float will then go into the distance for the get location at distance along spline the coordinate space should be changed to world and then from the return value for the get location at distance along spline drag off and then look for a find relative look at rotation and then for the start rotation value we are then going to go again to where the get actor location is and then right click and then look for a get actor transform and then this value will then be connected to the start transform by the find relative look at rotation and then we're gonna right click on the return value and then say split strut pin and then from the z we're gonna drag off and look for a map range clamped for the reach for the in range a and in range b this will be your vehicle's max steering angle in its positive and negative value so by the a will be the negative of the max steer and then the b will be the positive so for the sports car that will be negative 40 and negative for negative 40 and 40 and then by the out range a and b this will be the input of negative one and one which is readable for the steering input and then from there we're gonna drag in the vehicle movement component hold control and drag it in and then from the vehicle movement component we're gonna drag off and say set steering input and then connect the map range clamp return value to the steering and then connect the execution pin and then that will be the steering setup so we're gonna compile and save head to the event graph and then drag in the steering function connect that to the then a by the sequence node um, oh not before the ste steering we are then going to need the throttle so drag in the vehicle movement component drag off from the vehicle movement and say set throttle input and then connect that before the steering function and then set the throttle to something like 0.4 or a low value nothing lower than 0.3 because then the car would take forever to start moving I'm gonna save and then drag the sports car child blueprint into the level save all and then we're gonna simulate the level if you don't have the simulations like click on the three buttons on the side and then look for the simulate okay so if you see your vehicle doing this in particular that is because we didn't assign a value to the steer prediction the prediction value so select the steer prediction value and then set it to something like a thousand and then compile and save again 
and then save all and then re-simulate the level okay so now with the steer prediction variable given a value the vehicle is following the line and it turns okay the car is going a little bit faster for the corners but it is turning as it should so with that that is the end of this video in the next video we're gonna continue setting up the steering with the avoidance system so with that until the next one